In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to drop ELO. So, we have 10 games here that I played today. And I did like 10 puzzles and... Or not 10 puzzles. I did like 20, 30 puzzles on mating nets and mates. But these 10 games exemplify how to lose ELO in chess. So, in the first game here, you want to start off solid. You don't want your opponent to know what's going to happen. So, you want to, you know, have a normal opening, as normal as one can be. And then at this point, you want to kind of, you know, make a big mistake. One that's not as too noticeable, you know, but that can lose you the game. Um, if your opponent doesn't see it, that's okay. You're going to have more chances to give those mistakes. And you can make it a little more noticeable at this point. You know, just lose a pawn. You know, we all do that. And then, you know, bishops go backwards. Something people tend to forget. And then you can resign. You know, you can resign saying, oh, look, I lost a rook. And that's how, you know, you can lose elo. What's another way? Again, play the opening pretty normally, and then try to break through, and when your opponent is attacking you, just move your queen in random locations. Now, this is very important. This move attacks the queen, and, you know, you, you could take the pawn, but it's it's not the best because you could take the knight back. Listen, we don't want to get any of that cap uh, complicated stuff, so instead you just push the pawn. Again, forgetting that pieces move backwards, letting your opponent take, and... You know, you're losing, but it's not so clear, so you just play a little slowly, and then and then you blunder a rook. After that, as long as you don't blunder the other rook, you could keep playing. If you do, you can resign, right? No one's going to catch you on that. You can resign here. Now, sometimes you can't go for a loss. You can't always go for a loss. Sometimes you have to make it, you know, more believable. So in, in cases like this, when you, you know, oh, look, I'm opening up the... The king, oh, so scary, right? You want to actually make it so your opponent has the bishop pair in an open board so they could run around and do a bunch of stuff. And yeah, that, that kind of makes the game more, more interesting. But the point of this is you want to just go back and forth with your knight. You know, just go back and forth. Don't look for opportunities to improve the position because, I mean, let's face it, you already lost two games in a row. You don't really care about winning. The guy's close to 1,600, right? So here, you don't want to check and potentially win a pawn. Well, you pretty much do win a pawn. No, just go back and forth. Actually, this guy messaged me and he said, you suck, even though we drew. Now, the next game is kind of very important because even though this is a video of how to lose ELO, and this is date, what is it, like 35 or something of my journey to 2000, you know, you have to lose ELO sometimes. Even though this is a video on how to lose ELO, sometimes you have to win also. And the reasoning is simple. You don't want chess.com to find out that you're losing ELO on purpose, right? Because then you could get banned. So the strategy here is you want to play slightly better. Of course, still giving chances to your opponent to, to, you know, attack and win. But if they don't take all of those chances and if you've lost a bunch of games already, you know, you want to give one or two of those opportunities. So this is a perfect example right here. Um, the opponent could trap the queen. Queen has nowhere that it could go. Um, but, you know, your opponent didn't see it, so you give him another chance. Let him see it again. Maybe he sees it now. You could trap the queen. Or better yet, well, let's see. Can you trap the queen here? If this, yeah, well, and the queen is forced all the way back, you win a bishop, right? So it's okay. You can't exactly trap the queen there, but you could win a bishop. But don't, you know, if you're giving all these chances and they don't see it, that's on them. Um, at this point, you should, you know, just clearly get this and, and take the rook and you'll be winning. But you still want to give your opponent a chance to recognize their mistakes. You know, just drop the rook back. Maybe they'll have a chance. At a certain point, enough is enough. Just take the pawn. And, you know, my opponent resigned here. If they didn't, or ran out of time, rather. If they didn't run out of time, maybe it would give them another chance, right? Now, when you start a game with someone who is rated much higher than you, what you want to do is you want to be intimidated by them. You want to play much stupider than you normally would because they're a higher rated and you're intimidated. It's called the Magnus effect for the best player in the world. He has this effect on people. So what you want to do is you want to trade pieces whenever you can so it doesn't feel as scary. You want to just hop knights around and, you know, put yourself in worse positions because it's more fun. 
this is a, a perfect example of that. Now, if your opponent misses it, allowing both of your pieces to hang in this case, and you're down a piece, you're going to be down the rook, uh, the knight. If your opponent misses it, you can't do anything about that. You just continue. Continue to make chances for your, your opponent. You know, bring your pawn forward to protect your knight. It looks like you're doing something, but obviously it's just a terrible move. You create space, you do all this stuff. Oh, I fast forwarded by accident. So, where was it? Yeah, here. So that's what you want to do in this case, okay? You know, just trade stuff. Even when you're winning, just open up positions for your king. You know, coming here connects your rooks, puts your king in a much safer light. You're okay with trading at this point. You have, look at this craziness right here, right? But no, don't do that. Instead, push your pawn forward so it looks like it's stopping something. And then just blunder everything. And the point here, for those that don't know, is that the rook could come in and, you know, help out. Um, but the way it's done here, you're just losing. There is no way to stop losing the other rook. So after that, you know... It's pretty sad. You could pretend like you're trying to promote, but it's obvious that you can't, right? It's pretty obvious that you can't. And when he trades the rook away, I mean, just keep playing. Let yourself get checkmated, right? You don't want to be too obvious with your intentions of trying to lose ELO, okay? Again, it's a higher-rated player, so it makes, you know, no one's going to blame you for losing uh, ELO here. So that's fine. Okay, the next game is very instructive as well, okay? Um, again, play the opening decently well, and then make a big blunder. And if, you know, it's a big blunder that your opponent doesn't see, that's fine. The idea being here that after taking, or rather taking, um, you could just do all of this and the queen is overloaded, right? The queen has to protect the bishop and it, it can't protect the bishop and the rook. So, you know, give that opportunity to your opponent. If they don't see it, just give them another opportunity. You know what? Block your queen from protecting two pieces now. It's kind of cooler. Or I guess it's not two pieces, but block your king again. Oh, uh, your queen again. And at this point, you could resign because obviously, you know, you made a big mistake and people would normally resign. So that's, you know, just resigning is kind of key. Sometimes you can do that. That is okay. Now, if you're a 15 or 1600 rated player like me, you should be able to see mate in ones, mate in twos, maybe even mate in threes. Um, that's going to be key in this game. Again, we're going to look at the blunders here as well. Um, this just looks horrible. So you want to give your opponent a few opportunities to make a really nice move. And I mean, look, if you give one, two, you know, two, three opportunities at that point, you could already change it up, you know? Here, you want to hit your opponent with the en passant, because why wouldn't you? It's a forced move. Even if you don't want to do it, it's forced. And just push in a brilliant move. Brilliant moves like are, are very tricky to people, you know? They'll, they'll always take for some reason, and it'll put you in a winning position, but it, it, it's an easier way to force yourself to lose, right? It's an easier way to force yourself to lose. So what do I mean by that? You have less pieces, so you could trade them off and say, oh, you know, I didn't see the attack or something. Uh, in this case, we push in with the attack, and it's just beautiful. Maiden threes. We talked about maiden ones, twos, and threes around this rating. Do not go for the maiden three. Do not go for it, because then you're going to win. You're not going to lose elo, right? This is the maiden three. Don't go for it. Not worth it. Instead, you just want to trade pieces. We kind of talked about this. Now here, instead of taking here, you, th that would be too obvious, right? Like you have all this pressure. You can't do it right now. You can't just trade pieces now. So you want to make it more subtle, like you're still attacking, you know? You don't want to go for the maiden two. Again, that's not what, that's just not right. Um, what you want to do instead is you want to complicate things, make it look like you're doing stuff. And when your opponent resigns, I mean, you can't deal with that, right? You can't, you can't do anything about that. Okay. Now, in this game, we just won a game. And you would think, yeah, we could play around here and lose. And, and, and everything would be fine. No one would suspect it. Um, and you're right. No one would. So that's what we do. We kind of, we allow our opponent here 
to just kill us. We allow that to happen. Um, and our opponent sees it, which is great. And we don't do the only move that works here. Checking to get out of it and win the bishop back if he takes in that manner. And if he takes in this manner, you know, well, you just lose the queen and he loses the queen and the game continues. You don't do that. Instead, you attack the bishop. Because again, we're trying to lose Elo. And after all these trades, you know, you pretend to protect everything, right? You're like, okay, yeah, haha, I see the checkmate threat. Let me move my rook to the, uh, to the front. And you keep trying to attack and doing stuff that makes no sense, right? I mean, you're just completely lost here. Look at the elo bar. Uh, like, come on, look at this, look at this. But you have to make it believable. I, we talked about, okay, you don't have to at this point, but it's an example of if you didn't lose like five games in a row, how to make it believable, right? So this is more of an example one. And here, you know, you might say, okay, like you're clearly lost. You are, but you can't resign. You can't resign because you've already fought this long. If you resign now, it'll look kind of sussy baka, you know, it'll look weird. So you allow your, your opponent to draw you. And uh, it, it's, it's frustrating. When your opponent draws you and you're trying to go for the loss, it's, it's, it's frustrating. Um, but, you know, he had six seconds on the clock, so I guess, I guess we can't blame him. Okay, game nine. We're almost done with this beautiful video on how to lose ELO. Now in game nine, again, once again, it's a constant theme. You want to give enough chances. You want to start the opening pretty normal so it doesn't look weird that you're trying to lose ELO. You want to accept when they give up the knight for whatever reason, when you're protected, you want to accept that, right? But you know your opponent is going to gain the initiative and that's where the stuff, you know, stuff comes in nicely. You know, you bring your knight so your bishop and queen can't see anything, uh, but you know, you're developing a knight, so it looks like you're doing something, right? You have to do those types of moves. And, and so that's what we do here. And um, we just open up the lines for our king. Um, and we're just giving, we're just, we're giving more, right? We're giving more and more here. Our opponent doesn't see it. You know, we're blundering upon, our opponent doesn't care. And we're just doing all these bad moves, you know, here. This is a real threat, right? Um, but our opponent doesn't see it. And listen, after like eight games of torture, you have to give yourself some sunshine. So we end up trading everything and uh, we try to give ourselves sunshine, but not too soon. We still wanna give our opponent enough, you know, turns to to make a, you know, to, to, uh, to, to, to beat us. Because otherwise it wouldn't be fair. We're trying to lose ELO. Uh, so we wanna give our opponent enough opportunities to beat us. But again, once again, after a certain amount of torture, you do wanna give yourself some sunshine. So we're gonna look at this for a second. Um, here, the obvious move, even though you're winning, oh, you're pushing the pawn, you know, you take this pawn. It's called deflection. You deflect the, the bishops the bishop away from this square so your pawn can push and, and become a queen and we all celebrate and sing kumbaya, right? But you don't want to do that. That's not how you want to play this game. Instead, you want to give up the pawn that has the only chance of doing something and you want to go for his other pawn. And uh, you want to push this pawn for promotion. Now, at this point, you might say, okay, We've had eight terrible games, horrible games. We gave our opponents so many chances. Right? We could check here and do stuff. We could block the bishop so our pawn could promote. No, no, no. We still give our opponent a chance. And here we give a chance because our bishop, we want to trade so our pawn could go forward. Now, in this scenario, it's very simple. You just move the bishop to the side. So when the pawn promotes, you take it. And as black, you just want to move the bishop to the side and just go back and forth. You want to draw. You're clearly losing. But listen, if your opponent ignores it and it's your ninth game and you've lost a bunch of elo already, you got to give chess.com a reason to see that you're not cheating the system. You got to go for the win once in a while. And this works beautifully because you're checking, you're covering that square, and you're about to promote.
Now, I, I'm, I will admit that if my opponent didn't resign, maybe we would let them win, right? We are trying to lose ELO after all. But they resigned. Last game. Last thing to understand here, guys. Okay? You have to blunder at the perfect time. You have to play reasonable moves and blunder at the perfect time. Sometimes, not always, right? But you, you, mixing in these different strategies is how you become a better um, player at losing ELO. So here you double up the rooks because it makes sense. And you don't want your queen and rook to work together and do stuff. No. No. You want to instead put yourself in this weird looking position. Um, and then, you know, oh, look like I'm attacking the queen and bishop, right? This is called blundering at the perfect time, right? BPT, blundering, perfect time. It looks like you're attacking. It looks like you have the initiative, and that's why it's the perfect time, because no one will suspect that you've done it on purpose, right? No one will suspect it. You're giving up a rook. Now, if your opponent doesn't take it, I don't know what to tell you, okay? You can't leave it there for too long because it becomes too suspicious. You just bring it quietly back and uh, put yourself in shitty positions and wait for a perfect time to blunder at the perfect time again. Here you can't blunder the rook, right? It's too obvious at this rating. So you have to kind of maneuver around. And, and then here, look at this. Come on, that's hard. That's harder to see. Black has this plan of checking and winning a pawn. That's it. Perfect. Then the opponent saw it this time. And, you know, you still have to fight, blah, blah, blah. Y you have to fight a lot. That's, that's how you're nice. And um, you might be asking, why does it equalize here? Listen, when you're fighting this much, you're, you're not going to miss this move. Okay, you win the last pawn that could promote. And then, and then again, blunder at the perfect time. 6.9 seconds left, 69. No one will see it. Just move your rook like you're trying to go around or something. Come on, everyone makes that type of blunder, right? Then you could resign. So that's how you could lose ELO. In the past seven days, I lost nine ELO points. And uh, listen, nine is not that much. You could lose a lot more. But try your best out there, guys, and take my tips and tricks. And uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.